Pokemon! It's like a... What's hot, hot in the, in the pot? pot. <laughs> it's Moni. What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the Insta Live, everyone. I hope everyone's safe and healthy. Uh, as we have more people trickle in, we have a very special guest today. She's an up-and-coming R&B and pop artist. On February 25th, she released her debut EP Forever, which has attracted lots of attention. It's the homie. It's d d Music Group's Laika. Welcome to the Hot Pop Podcast. Hello, oh, hey guys, thank you for having me. <laughs> what's up, what's up? All right, so here's the question that I've always wanted to ask. What's hot in the pot? What's hot in your pot, Like, What's been going on? Tell the people what's up. Um, It's been good. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a lot of snacking, um, making my usual craft beats at home, mm -hmm. and um, just communicating with friends, and then like still working on music and whatnot. I like that. I like that too. What's been new for the quarantine? How's the quarantine been treating you? How are you feeling now about it? Quarantine? Um, well, I feel like there are like different phases in quarantine. Like at first, like everything's chill. And then like, you know that it's going to end. And then eventually like, you're like, oh shit, like when is this going to actually end? And then that's when like you get like, you're like literally with yourself isolated and then you get deep in your feels. And then like, you become like a ball of depression for a while. And then after you get out of it, you know, and then, like, I feel like I'm out of it now. <laughs> well, thank you. That's, 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 that's good that you're out of it. I'm glad you feel glad you feel better. To better days, to better days. So, for everyone that's in the audience right now, here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna go through like kind of like his musical origin story, like a backstory, and then we're gonna go and talk about the EP and go into each track. And yeah, that's sound like a plan. Okay, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. So the first question I have for you is: so why music? Uh, music um well i was inspired to get into it by my mom um mm -hmm. i always saw her singing and she kind of forced me when i was young and then eventually i ended up wanting to do it um i knew that it was something for me when i was around 12 when i first um made my first song and then afterwards it was about last year when i realized it was something that i wanted to do initially like and take you seriously and pursue mm -hmm. It's cool. You said 12 years old? Dang, that's, that's like super early. Well, Dang. Were you in like chorus and stuff when you were in like in school? Were you like popping out already in high in like in like middle school? No, we didn't. We didn't have um, anything like regarding music in my middle mm -hmm. school at the time and high school. No, high school. Yeah. Like they only had like musical theater and they actually started having music programs like the year after I left like middle school like i was like <laughs> okay i guess that's cool i see that i see that so now you said you were starting only recently only a year and your music is already like popping off only from a year of hard work i can't imagine what it's going to be like a couple of years from, from now it's going to be insane the growth what are some of the biggest struggles you faced as an independent artist starting out um i mean i believe right now i'm still starting out um so i would say right now um it would be probably having patience with <laughs> funny one of the tracks is called Please Be Patient, but literally yeah. being patient with the whole project. Um, it was supposed to be released initially um, August of last year. Oh, okay. and um, it kept getting pushed back because um, of like, of course, it's not realistic of something to be completed by a certain date sometimes, especially um, I was getting sick and then like, I would only be able to go like once a week or like because I have to work or like that kind of thing, just balancing everything out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just, just having patience, like not everything, like as like much as you want it to go sometimes, like having a plan, like sometimes it, it doesn't go that way. And then, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back. Like, I feel like everything was like playing like, like a movie in my head and it, it's like perfect. So yeah. Okay. That's really good. That's really good. What are some tips that you have for some other artists um, interested in jumping onto the scene? Since you've already jumped onto the scene yourself, what would you what would you say to some other artists that are thinking about it or struggling um, to make the first step? I would say just come out with something. Like, not saying like you know like make something on the spot and then just like release it. Like, of mm -hmm. course, like putting your feelings, your thoughts into it, um, planning, of course. But I feel like 
the struggle with starting out is actually putting something out because you are your biggest critic. And after a while, you just end up not releasing something for so long. And yeah, like I, those, some of those songs in the project I've had for like at least two years. Like Please Be Patient, I had for two years at least. So yeah, th that took a while to get out, but you know. All right, so this segment is called Three Pointers because I'm gonna ask you questions and you're gonna give me three bullet points for each question. You'll see what I mean. And I've got three questions for you. You ready for this? Okay. Okay. So here's a scenario. You're starring in the Celebrity Bachelorette. We're at a three-way finale. Who are the three celebrities fighting for the final rose for you? In other three. words, who are your three celebrity crushes? Three celebrity crushes. Ooh. Can it be girls? Okay, um, Zayn Malik. Okay, Sean okay. Mendes. Okay, okay. Um, Taeyang from BTS. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I'm like BTS. Great answers, great answers. Who's, I probably okay. have, like, others that are just not coming into mind. <laughs> others, yeah. All right, so here's the next, next question, next, next question. Picture the scenario. It's however many years in the future you're super successful in the industry. And you have your own label. You have enough money to sign three artists, any three. Who you got? Um, damn, like, I would, like, deep, like think deeply into this because mm -hmm. it's going to be different a few years from now. Like, a lot mm -hmm. of artists are going to be emerging from then. Mm -hmm. from then. Three artists that you would sign to, like, your, your ultimate dream label, if you had your own label. Um, I can't think of, like, specific artists just because... It's like that would be like far fetched from then. <laughs> I know it's like <laughs> this is this is this is a this is a fun little scenario but to think. About. I would want yeah. artists that make like fun bops, but like also have deep meaningful shit into it. So I feel like that's one of them. Another right. of them, like a, a super like like um person into rock, like you know, like the emo emo rock kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That um, I forgot. What is it? Smoke per? No, no, that's not it. No, hello. <laughs> well, something with a will. Like Wait. I feel like I jam to their music. Like I, I vibe with it. So. Oh, for sure, for sure. I feel that. All right, last question that we got for you for this segment. What are three cities or countries you'd love to perform at? Three countries, three cities. Um. Countries or uh, cities? It could be either. Just three locations. Um, France, um, the Philippines, just because the Philippines. it's like the hometown mm -hmm. gotta gotta um, go there gotta stay. the third would probably be spain spain okay okay Does it seem there like for the other two? festivals they have there i think it's spain spain so, yeah cool, cool. interesting interesting choices i like that all right so that concludes our segment thank you for thank you for thank you for going along with the three-pointer segment um <laughs> Uh, next, we're going to talk about your music. We're going to talk about the Forever EP. So just a very simple question. What is the Forever EP? Forever EP. Very open-ended um, question for you. However else you want to interpret it to the audience. Um, so the Forever EP is like an introductory to um, like what, what I've gone through as a person, of course. Um, as an individual. Um, so basically, it's this girl um, going through the struggles of finding self-love just because she never got that growing up. Um, that kind of love that she should have been given or like a child should be given. Mm -hmm. um, so then um, each song kind of ties into each other. Um, it's like a story. And um, it's just basically about this girl who goes through like different scenarios and ultimately like realizing the love that'll last forever is not really from the other people, but like ultimately coming from her own, mm -hmm. like from herself. Mm. So that's why it's called Forever. So, so, such a beautiful meaning. Such a beautiful meaning. I like that. So, self love, right? Self love. Would you say self love is like the whole theme of like the whole project? It would be. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, now that we have this whole theme, let's go ahead and dive into each track. 
There are five tracks in this beautiful project so far. We're going to start with track number one, Keys. So Keys sets the tone of the whole project super beautifully, portraying like a little bit of like all the themes that are going to be touched throughout the whole project. Um, at the first like opening lines of this song, uh, it seems like like sex is about to happen. Like there's like very intimate, like, intimate imagery coming around. But the track continues and then themes of, no pun intended, unlocking one another to quote, to quote you, peel back our layers and share our scars. So I guess the question for you is, um, what is Keys? And how does this track reflect your views on intimacy? Um, so I would say, um, like sex is very intimate, yes. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like it's easier to undress in front of a person. Um, it's easier to do that um, than actually like dive deep into your fears and like your deepest secret, like with really going in your head. Cause you can really like show this person that's like smiling on the yeah. outside, but in the inside you could be like hurting or like going through some really shit. So, um, you know, just getting to your feelings. Getting deep into the feelings. So that's the very important part, right? Really important part of just any intimate relationship you'd say. I'm setting an intimate relationship. Um, oh, for any intimate relationship, it's like you'd say just getting like intimate almost emotionally then, right? Yeah, I feel like that's when like you you can really say you're connecting with a person. Mm. You can you can literally connect with a person, but like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to track number two. Track number two is close to me. The song is powerful, both vocally and emotionally. You really showcase like your range on the song. It's like super, super dope. You really show off your skills here, so it's really cool. And the emotion in the song is just like really strong. There's like this irony, like being physically close to someone, yet being unable to connect with them, as we were like talking about earlier too, like unable being unable to emotionally connect with someone. It seems referenced throughout this whole song. Can you talk more about this irony specifically in the song and the what feelings you're trying to convey the most in the song to your audience? Um so I just wanted to put a song out there that um, people could like feel like they could relate to. So I put it in a in a more like romantic relationship setting. Mm -hmm. but, um, ultimately, like I had said um, in this one interview, that the song is about um, like a broken bond with a parent, and mm -hmm. um, it's a parent is like very close to you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's like they're supposed to be there for you and um yeah it's supposed to it's just <laughs> sorry 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 i don't want to pry i didn't mean the question uh, you're good. it's just to show like you know it doesn't matter how close someone is to you like physically mm -hmm. um or like it can for some people but personally like for for someone to actually like like be there like it's it's more so like emotional and not you know just like <laughs> no i feel you i feel you i feel you don't i feel you it's like a lot less it's it's you it's it's like a lot less emotional a lot more you can always be physically there for someone but that so the significance of being physically there for someone isn't as strong you would say as being it's more significant if you're there for someone emotionally and that's with any type of relationship right yeah, because someone, yeah, they can they can be there in present, but mm -hmm. if their heart is there, if they're like you know, if they're just like, oh yeah, um, you know, how was your day? Oh, it's oh, like it sucks. Oh, okay, well maybe it'll be better next time. You know, it's like really, oh man, like okay, I guess you don't care. Or like, has that happened to you before? Um, Where someone was just like, oh yeah, how was your day? Oh, I I'm, I feel like shit. Oh, cool. <laughs> I feel like that's like um, a small talk topic, and if mm -hmm. like it was to be real, and someone were to say that, mm -hmm. that would be the response you say because you don't know how to react. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So PSA: Don't try not to do that, everyone. Try not to do that. If someone, if someone says <laughs> their day is going bad, just be like, just ask them. Just be like, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and go to track number three. Nobody else but you. By the way, congrats on surpassing 500k plays on this song on Spotify. Congratulations. Thank super, you. super dope. Super dope. Um, this song kind of just speaks for itself. I feel like the song is just a banger, right? <laughs> like, uh, great vocals. 
great production. Shout out to Cooper Lee. Great production on this song, too. You're, like, effortlessly, like, going on these instrumental, going on this instrumental. Can you explain the process of making this song? And when you initially recorded this track, did you expect it to be the hit single that it is right now? Um, no, I didn't, actually. Um, I had a feeling that it would garner more attention compared to the other tracks, just because it is a pop track. Mm -hmm. Um, when I had made, like, the trash beat to send to Cooper, um, it was, like... I think it was decent. It was like <laughs> I think it was like an early Calero type beat that like okay, okay. Could go there like but like it's like it's obvious that like some girl some like some young twelve year old girl made it like, <laughs> from her bedroom. Um but yeah, um so I sent it to Cooper, like we were just a lot of going back and forth um at the early stages. Um but literally, that song is about, it was inspired by, um, oh, I wonder how a club, going to a club would be, like, <laughs> how would going to a club be like? Like, mm -hmm. oh, let me, let me try and make it, like, like, lovey-dovey, because I'm all about that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I was like, hmm, okay, so you go into a club, it's your first time, and, like, you, like, you see someone that you're feeling, and then, like, they're seeing you, too, and then mm -hmm. it's just, like, oh eye locking and then like you know and then <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so like i envisioned like some kind of like dance battle or something like okay have you seen my dance battle like <laughs> yeah like some kind of like dance battle but not really it's like more so like it seems like it's like, it's just like the boys against the girls or something like that and then like mm -hmm. where um it's like who's gonna cave in first because like who's gonna cave in first and be like okay hey like what's up you know so that's oh, how okay. in my head because I like see. yeah in the songwriting process i do like if i'm stuck i try to like envision some kind of like video that would go along with it mm -hmm. and that's what like i thought of <laughs> that's 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 definitely interesting so when you did go to the club for the first time did you did did, did you meet your did you fulfill your expectations or oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I haven't gone to good clubs because um, the first club I ever went to um, was a gay club, so I did have a lot of fun. Okay. Um, but like the second one, it was like, yeah, it was like whatever. I feel like it was fun because it was like ratchet and like <laughs> fun to be ratchet. But <laughs> <You're> ratchet. <laughs> but other than that, um, like I feel like everyone says eighteen-year-old clubs are like whack. So I want to experience like twenty-one year old clubs or like twenty-one plus. Yeah, so, twenty-one plus night because like eighteen plus is what like a, like a Thursday night or something, right? Like yeah, something like that. And like they, they're always like complaining about it. And then like I guess it would be nice to to know if this person's like two years younger than me, like you know, to have them on the same age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And no like restrictions. No like drink restrictions. Like if I want wine, I can have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can just go over to the bar when you don't have to pregame before. You can just go in and just be like I mean, I mean you pregame before I do. Oh, you can go, <laughs> yeah. I mean uh, I mean, uh what? I don't I don't know what that is. What is that? What is this drink you're talking about? I don't know. Boy, if you don't <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, let's see. Alright, I have this I wanted to bring this up. Um, this song is a bang. We were just talking about all the positive club vibes of this. But there was one line in the very beginning of the song. Um, and I think I mentioned to you did this before also that there's one line in this song where it just seemed slightly out of place. And I just wanted to, for you to shed a little more light on this line. Um, this is the very first line of the song where the song is like super vibey and like fun. But then you say, met you in the dark. I was torn apart. Save my heart from great disaster. What's this disaster that you're you're talking about in the song? So yeah, that was my ass trying to make something like deep and emotional. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I feel like okay, like I feel like a lot of people go to the club after a breakup, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or like some kind of party and they just like go wild. They become a person that mm -hmm. <laughs> they aren't usually. Um but yeah, so it was like met you in the dark. That's one part. I have to like remember my lyrics. Um, so yeah, met you in the dark. We literally met you in the dark. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. also like 
metaphorically because like i'm in a dark place oh, <laughs> i was torn oh, apart oh. i was in the cold i was like elsa in frozen oh, yeah. <laughs> she's going alone her own way cold heart um, no elsa oh dang <laughs> who is she <laughs> maybe Ooh. it's maybe it's maybe <laughs> but um sorry i lost my train of thought okay okay i lost it too but the last line or the the last line of that first track first line save my heart from a great disaster, great disaster. so like the, the, great, the, so the disaster. dark place right yeah so it's save my heart from uh, a great disaster i feel like disa the disaster is like doing something stupid mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah like doing something stupid like maybe mm -hmm. i don't know everyone's definition of stupid actions like after a breakup would yeah be depending on the person mm -hmm. but like mine per se would be like um, I don't know, like drinking too much, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really. Oh, I don't. Oh. I haven't gone gotten, gotten to that great disaster. Ooh, Thank, to thankfully, let's 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 hope we ne let's hope we never get to that great disaster, right? Yeah. But yeah, but that's 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 some cool insight for a line in in a very popular song. So thanks for that. Thanks for that. All right, on to the next track. We are in track number four. Please be patient. Um, <laughs> before we actually go into the track, there was just a small little. Thing I thought it was funny, especially since we're talking about going to the club when you're in a dark place. It's like this is such probably the most vulnerable song in the track, or mm -hmm. probably the most vulnerable song in the album or the EP, right? And it's like after such like a high energy fun, oh yeah, I'm going to the club getting lit. Right after it's like, oh, I'm the most vulnerable, and I just imagined like you're leaving the club and you're all sad and like you're just simping and stuff. That was just, like a thing when I was listening to it. I was like, oh, I was so hyped, and then I just got all sad and I was like, oh wow, what is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, really, really, I'm really emotions. Yeah, quarantine. <laughs> I know you're really playing. You're play, really playing around with the with the emotions in the CP. But it was really good. It was a really interesting transition. Um, but yeah, so to go into the actual track, um, the song starts like very soft, almost like empty. It seems like you're going to like, or we're, are you're taking the listeners to the darkest part of the mind? Um, and this song is full of like personal confessions. Um leaving yourself in such a vulnerable state. The layering of the voices on the song is like super good. Um, I'm not gonna much, I'm not gonna ask much regarding like the personal confections as they're laid out pretty clearly for the listeners. So there's not much of like, oh, what did this mean? You literally just said it. And you lay out your confessions perfectly. But I do wanna, I do wanna talk about this. After the second chorus, we reach this like fulcrum or this tone shift that gives me chills every time I listen to it. I say it every time I listen to it. The, after the second chorus, you sing, let it rain on me, the sun will shine again. This uplifting tone was like fills your ears and like swallows the listener with such a full sound, which is like such a great contrast compared to how the track started. Like you start so empty and you just like bombard them completely, like hug them with the sound, and it's crazy. So, uh, I guess my question is: Can you explain in your own in your own words what this tone shift in the song symbolizes? Okay, so from sorry, no, no, I, went, I went on a little a little longer than usual, but yeah. Oh, no, no, you're good, you're good. Um, right. So, uh, coming from Nobody Else But You, Nobody Else But You is all like, yeah, having a good time, yeah. And then, like, I, I we did want that um, tone change in there just because it would have been kind of weird to, or at least for me, mm -hmm. um, to go from Nobody Else But You, Valentine's Day, and then end with a sad song. Initially, yeah. it was supposed to be, Please Be Patient was going to be the last song, initially. Oh, okay. um, but we, I went ahead and changed that, or... Like we we talked about it, um, Cooper and I, and mm -hmm. um, so the reason for that, um, so please be patient is a track itself where it does tie into Valentine's Day. Like I feel like those two songs are connected the most, and um, for please be patient, that's like um, kind of like an ode to people that um, were dealing with me while I was dealing with um, depression at my worst time mm -hmm. um it was like you know like you know, please be patient with me <laughs> like i'm trying because at that time it was like you know like me not being in the state of mind where i wanted to be but trying hard and like not knowing how to say that either like you know being able to communicate how um i was feeling at the time mm -hmm. um and then with that tone change it was like in the whole throughout the whole song i'm talking about like I'm, I'm like talking to a person that I really care about, but in the in the change, it's like let it rain on me. It's like me with myself being like, 
you know, I can get through this, you know, it's like back being back with myself and like, so learning, learning positivity, mm. <laughs> learning positivity, uh, learning how to cope and when the students start sharing, yeah. I feel like it's, I feel like um, it's, it's a good reminder that like, even if you're at the lowest points in your life where you feel like you're at a low point, like it'll, it'll come back again. Yeah. Like, feel your highs again and then to be humble when those highs do come yeah wow super super such a great message in the whole song and a great message you're sending to your listeners really really reassuring so it's very dope very dope such a great track and as we're coming to the final track track number five valentine's day honestly i'm surprised this track doesn't have as many plays as it does because i think the song's a pop as like um, uh, your other two singles, right? I think you really ended the EP on a super positive note, which is with this track. I think it really captures the sensation of like being in love, I guess, with like this all these all these all your different lyrics, um, really very 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 connected to the other person or the other persona, we'll say. Um, and I like how you tied in like "Don't worry, babe, I got you forever," and like that's like the same line in the in the first song too. And that was really dope. Um, I guess the only question that I have, and I guess for everyone else, is who's your Valentine in this song? I actually had three. <laughs> <laughs> I had three. <laughs> Me, myself, and I. And, ooh, ooh, tell him, tell him. <laughs> no. For sure, um, for sure. I like, yeah, I, um, I had named it Valentine's Day, um, not just because I wrote it on Valentine's Day, but because okay honestly it was supposed to be like some kind of romantic lovey-dovey song whatever but then i was like wait a second like this is towards myself <laughs> so um it was like i feel like for valentine's day everyone's always like you know i'm forever alone like you know i'm never gonna find <laughs> someone like oh like hashtag forever alone or like whatever and just like, like that <laughs> so like go out with your friends or like even treat yourself out I feel like, I don't know, like, I, I hang out with myself a lot. <laughs> like, take myself out. Like, that's weird. Hey, treat treat yourself, people. right? Yeah. Yeah, like, that's weird to some people. Like, I'll be like, yeah, I love, like, going to gardens by myself or, like, going to the grocery store even. Like, that's weird to that, some that's people. Just... But I feel like, that's, like, a, a level of self-love that... Exactly. That is, like, pretty high, in my opinion. Mm. Like, being comfortable. And, yeah, so it's, like... If I could sing that to the mirror, I would, but like that would come off as like conceited to people. Just <laughs> but, talking in a mirror, just be like. <laughs> yeah, initially that that song is for like yourself, but of course we'll see in the video how it's gonna be. Um, mm. If like we're gonna to make it some kind of like Korean drama, lovey dovey kind of stuff. Ooh, we'll ooh. We'll you see. should you should do it where you come out of the rain because you're talking about the rain in the last song and be like. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if you feel plans on the music video, but yeah, tease tease a little bit about that. What's what's up with that? The, you said video. Ooh. Oh, video. Um, yeah. So the plans are to come up with videos this year for the rest mm. of the year. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, depending on how quarantine treats the music life, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That's dope. That's dope. So, well, we just went through all the five tracks of the forever ep how do you feel about how do you feel after like going through the whole thing and just talking about it again how'd that feel um a little nervous <laughs> to be honest, i was like i was like listening to your questions mm -hmm. but then also i was like reading the comments so i didn't realize that i can't do that at the same time <laughs> like, <laughs> so i was kind of forgetting what you were saying and i was like wait, wait what did you think <laughs> hey, but you answered the questions perfectly, so I don't. Nothing wrong there. Nothing wrong there. All right, all right. So there you have it. We just went through the whole EP, everyone. Again, this is the for every EP streaming on. You're on. Wait, you're on all platforms, right? Yes. Okay. okay streaming. Let's get for every EP, all platforms. If you haven't listened to the EP, what are you doing? Go support it. It's like 15 minutes of your quarantine. Just go ahead and go watch. Go watch. Go watch. Go listen to it. On time. Yeah, everyone in the Instagram live right now. Thank you for watching this Instagram live. Thank you for those of you that are here right now. Are there any last words for the viewers or and for the people that are when they watch us on YouTube? Any any words for them? Tell the fans what's 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 to come. What is coming up next for the Leica? What is coming up? Um, more music. 
more music, more music. More. um just figuring out which songs to put on the next project which ones to work on and like because yeah. a bunch of like just rough ideas right now oh i see sounds good sounds good all right so thank you guys for watching follow us on instagram at the dot hot pie and at like the with two a's like this video for the youtubers that are going to watch this on youtube later on next week when this airs on thursday at 12 p.m when it's uploaded follow us on instagram the hot pot like this video if you enjoyed this interview type style video comment what was your favorite song and your favorite moment of this interview and subscribe to the hot pot podcast channel and subscribe to like channel music channel on youtube this is like a uh, and be ready for more content. And remember, stay, stay hot. hot. Stay I was hot in the <laughs> there you go. I was, I was, I was ready for that. I was ready for that. Thank you, everyone, for for being here. Uh, links are everywhere. And thanks, for like it. All right, we killed this. Good night. Bye, guys. All right, peace out. Bye.